Welcome back to Sense and Eggs Landscape Supply. My name is Justin. Today is a day where it is snowing. It's just starting to snow. It's white outside. And we're gonna learn a little bit today how to veneer stone. We're gonna go inside. We're gonna show you guys how to veneer uh, the different steps and also the different types of veneer stone. So instead of being outside in the cold, we're gonna do it inside. So whether you're a contractor, a homeowner, DIY person, whatever it is, uh, you wanna watch this video to learn how to veneer stone. So Henry, what are the differences between concrete veneer stone and natural stone veneer stone? Uh, one of the main differences in natural stone and concrete veneer is natural stone is gonna give you a very nice appearance. Your thin veneer, the manufactured products, they also do a very, very nice job of replicating real stone. I have some sample pieces that I wanna show you the difference. This is a manufactured stone. Uh, we sell uh, Provia. One of the reasons we sell Provia they do a very, very nice job of replicating real stone, and the price point is a very, very good price point for a manufactured product. So that is actually just concrete that is... This is concrete, poured. concrete that is poured into a mold, and then they paint the outside. Now, they use iron oxide paints. Iron oxide paints uh, will last a long, long time. They do not fade. They actually give a 50 year warranty on their product, as long as it's installed properly. So again, very nice job replicating real stone. Now I wanna show you some pieces of real stone. This is real stone that has been cut into a thin veneer. Okay, again, it has to weigh 15 pounds or less per square foot. So when they cut it, they cut it to a thickness, usually around an inch thick um, to make that weight. Henry, here's the big question is the price point. What is the, pri what is the price point from concrete veneer to natural stone veneer? And is there a difference and why is there a difference? Is there one that's better than another? Can you explain that? First, we'll talk about the price point. The price point of the manufactured is gonna be much less. It's much easier to make a thin veneer by pouring concrete into a mold, where with a real stone, they actually have to cut these pieces out of larger pieces of stone. So there's much more work involved. This is considered a ledge stone. Okay, ledge stone is gonna give you kind of a horizontal look, very easy to install. We also have a field stone, okay? A field stone, again, is, is a pretty easy uh, stone to install. With a field stone, you're always gonna have a mortar joint, okay? With the ledge stone, there's two different ways of adhering this to your wall. You can do this as a dry stack where the pieces of stone are actually gonna touch one another and you don't have any mortar in between them. Another way of doing it, and again, I'm gonna show you this on, on the wall that we just did. You usually have about a half inch separation, and then when you're all done sticking the stone up, you're gonna use a grout bag, and you're gonna grout that joint. We typically, on an exterior wall, recommend using a grout joint. The reason for that is if you have a grout joint, you really don't have to worry about water getting behind your stone. We live here in the Northeast. If water gets behind the stone, in the winter time it freezes and your stone will pop right off. So if you're very, very careful, you can do it on an exterior without a grout joint. What you want to do, what you want to make sure, whether you're doing it with or without a grout joint, is to coat the entire back of the stone and when you stick that onto the wall, you're gonna, you're gonna shimmy it around a little bit to make sure there's no way water can get behind that stone. This stone here is called an ashlar pattern. An ashlar pattern, you get three different heights of stone. You get a small, a medium, and a large. The small and the medium add up to the large. 
So that's what we consider an ashlar pattern. With an ashlar pattern, you do have to have a grout joint to make that hold out so that you, you know, so your stone always holds out. When you do veneer, you always want to make sure that everything looks nice and level. You don't want your stones, you know, going one way or another. You always want to try to have it looking as level as possible. This is one where if you didn't put a grout joint into it, it just wouldn't hold out. What about corners? So it seems easy to be able to manufacture a corner, but can they make a corner with natural stone? They can, and I'm gonna show you an example of that. Um, what they do, they take a stone and they actually cut a corner out of the stone. Now, usually when they do that, one side will be longer than the other. The reason they do that is as you're sticking the stone onto the wall, you're always gonna to wanna to reverse the long and short sides so that you don't have a straight line going up your wall. Okay, one of the reasons you wanna use a corner piece, corner pieces make it look like you're using a full stone, like a full veneer stone. If you were to do it without a corner piece, you would have to make a corner that looks something like this and you can always tell that it's a thin veneer stone. This is what your corner pieces will do. If you look at this side and this side, it makes it look as though the entire wall is a full veneer stone, and that's, that's the look you want to achieve. So to answer your question, yes, they, they will cut corner pieces out of real stone. This is an electrical box uh, cover. So your, your electrical box would be on the inside here. After I show you all the accessories, we'll actually show you some that we have up on the wall so you can see what this actually looks like. We also have for exterior lights, this is a, a light box. So your, your electrical outlet box would sit inside here. Your light would be on the outside of that. Just gives you a nice clean look. A lot of times when you're doing exterior wall, you're transitioning from stone on the bottom to vinyl siding. This is called a water table sill. Water table sills will mount to your wall. You'll bring your stone up to the water table sill and your siding comes down to the top of your water table sill. This is a water table sill here. A lot of times you're gonna do the bottom of your wall in stone. You're gonna transition from the stone to your vinyl siding with a water table sill. Okay, here's an example of one of the accessories. This is a nice transition between your veneer stone and your electrical outlet. Uh, this is a light switch. Uh, we can use these on your electrical outlets also. Okay, here's a nice example where we've used that as a transition again from your veneer stone to your electrical outlet. Uh, just a nice clean look. Um, a lot of people won't use those and just bring your veneer stone up to your electrical outlet. This is just a very nice clean look. All right, now the hard part. What are the tools that are needed to install this veneer stone? What you're gonna need is something to mix your mortar in. You know, some people will use wheelbarrows. We do have these trays. You can mix it in a five gallon bucket, just something to mix your, your veneer mortar up into. I don't, I don't like wheelbarrows because that requires two hands. <laughs> okay. One, one hand these tools. <laughs> five, five, gallon, five gallon bucket or one of these trays works well. Okay, something to mix your mortar. We do have these little uh, tools here that help mix the mortar. Uh, once your mortar's mixed up, you know, you're gonna need a trowel. So here's three tools you're gonna need. Something else, you're gonna want a bucket of water. Okay, bucket of water, not only to mix your, your veneer mortar up with, always nice to have a clean bucket of water to try to keep your hands clean, keep your tools clean. You don't wanna get mortar on the outside of your stone. It's inevitable that you're going to, the cleaner you can keep your hands, the cleaner you can keep your tools, the less chance you're gonna have of getting mortar on the outside of the stone. If you, I got office hands, so. <laughs> <laughs> so. So you're gonna want a big bucket of water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can you wear gloves? You can, you can wear gloves and uh, probably not a bad idea, especially when you're, when you're first starting out uh, doing veneer stone, you're gonna end up with mortar on your hands. Mortar's kinda caustic. 
Um, it will rough your fingers up. Uh, after working with it for a while, you're not gonna be able to turn your cell phone on with your thumbprint because it'll wear your thumbprint right out. So a pair of tight fitting gloves is always a great thing to have. One other thing you're gonna wanna think about is a face mask. If you're cutting stone to keep from breathing the dust, you're also gonna want uh, safety glasses when cutting stone to protect your eyes. What do you use to cut the stone? What you're gonna use mainly with a thin veneer stone is a four inch angle grinder with a diamond blade. And that's something you can buy at Lowe's or? Yeah, the angle wherever. grinders, you know, any, any uh, uh, place can sell those. We do have the little uh, diamond wheels, but you can buy those at any uh, box store also. Depending on what you're mounting your stone to, Okay, uh, we're gonna show you an example today of mounting to um, wood. When you're mounting to wood, you're gonna need a vapor barrier, some tar paper, and you're gonna put metal mesh up that will hold your mortar, that will eventually hold your stone. Again, we're gonna show you an example of how to do this in just a little bit. So, so it's just regular tar paper like what you would put on a roof, right? Yes, yep, roofing tar paper. And, and so, this wire mesh is, special that you can only buy here right yeah it's sold it's sold at sense and eggs it comes in a two by eight foot section um, again when when you're doing a job if you need us to help you figure what you need all of us salespeople are here to help you do that we're mounting to plywood today yes but you can what if i just got a block wall if you have a block wall you can mount directly to your block wall as long as your block is clean and never been painted do i have to put a scratch coat on it first on the block wall yes okay. yep and what you're going to want to do is you only want to scratch coat far enough ahead to where that mortar doesn't set up before you put mortar on the back of the stone and stick it up. When you're, when you're applying to a block wall or cement board, again, as long as it's clean, never been painted, you can apply the stone directly to that, that surface with a scratch coat. Now, when we're putting it on wood, again, you wanna protect your wood, your mortar's wet when you apply it, so you wanna protect your wood. We're gonna do that with tar paper. So what you need to put your tar paper up is a staple gun, okay? Nice tool that most everyone has. Do I get to, do I get to hold that? You do, don't hurt your hands. Then you're gonna apply your metal mesh. Okay, again, those come in two by eight foot sections. Uh, they can be cut. You're gonna need a pair of cutters to cut it. Uh, be careful, again, pair of gloves so that you don't hurt your hands. This stuff is very sharp once it's been cut. So you want to be very careful. You just cut that to any size you want, right? To any size that you need to cut it. Sweet. Now, in order to hold your, your metal mesh onto the wall, there's a few different ways you can do it. Some people will use roofing nails. Some people will use staples. We like the mesh screws. To me, a mesh screw, something that's screwed into a wall, you're never gonna to have to worry about it falling off the wall. Whether you're using roofing nails, um, staples, or the screws, you have to make sure that they're not gonna rust. If they rust, your stone's gonna come right off the wall. One more tool that we're gonna need at the very end of your project is a grout bag. So when you're, when you're putting up a stone with a mortar joint, you gotta clean that up at the end. We have plastic, very inexpensive grout bags that if you're only doing one job, these work out fantastic. If you're gonna do multiple jobs, we do sell a much heavier duty grout bag. This is reusable, this will last years and years and years. What we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to actually mix your veneer mortar. We sell a veneer mortar that's made to put up thin veneer. It has all the additives that you need already in it, so it's very easy, you just mix it with water. Years ago, you would have to add additives to your, your mixes. Everything you need is in the bag of veneer mortar. Just mix it with water, and we're gonna show you how to do that now. So, do I pour this whole bag in here? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do the whole bag. You know, do enough to where it's not gonna set up on you. So you're gonna pour a little bit in. Now, you're gonna take this tool, Justin. 
and start tool, right? start mixing it. If you're strong like you, yes, you can do it in one with one hand. Okay, as you can see, he's going to have to add a little bit more water. Again, you want to do this very, very slowly. Now the consistency that you want is kind of like a very, very creamy peanut butter consistency. Now it looks, looks like Justin is doing a pretty good job here getting the right consistency. But looks like, looks like Justin, yeah, for a first timer, he's doing all right. Be a little yeah, that's pretty good. Now that Justin has that mixed up, we're going to have him uh, skim coat a little bit onto the mesh. So what we're going to do, Justin, you might sometimes want two, one to scoop it, one to put it on here. That way you can keep that way you can keep the one tool. Hold my sleeves up. <laughs> do they have black mortar? Uh, you can get colors. <laughs> You can actually get colored mortar. We don't usually suggest colored mortar because it's second. tough. Because <laughs> it's tough to get the same color from batch to batch. Okay. You know how that goes, right? <laughs> so what you're gonna wanna do, I would probably take a second tool. Okay, second put put some mortar on your trowel. Do I gotta, do I gotta put a scratch you're coat? gonna put a scratch coat. Yep. So you gotta you gotta kinda get it on the back oh, of your stone. Backside. Yep. Like that? Okay. okay, so what you're going to do, we're going to get a scratch coat onto here. A little bit more, please. And again, what we're going to do, you don't want to work too far ahead. You're going to want to put a scratch coat just far enough ahead to where it doesn't set up on you before you're ready to stick the stone on. There you go. Okay, so once you've got a scratch coat, you know, you probably want to go a little bit further than that. Um, but once you get your scratch coat on, you don't want your mortar to dry too quickly. So what we're going to do, we're just going to wet down the back of the stone. That will keep the mortar from sucking into the stone and drying too quickly. Like this? Yep, so you apply your mortar. How much? Uh, enough, uh, usually about a half to three quarters of an inch. You want to smooth that out. Okay, once, once you get the mortar on the back of the stone, you've got your scratch coat on the wall, you're going to apply your stone to that scratch coat. So what you're going to want to do, you're going to kind of want to shimmy the stone. Do and a little shake. Then again, try to keep the face of your stone as clean as possible. Okay, now if you do a close up here, you can see I don't I don't actually have the stone all the way to the floor. The reason I did that is to show you how quick that mortar sticks the stone to your scratch coat. Okay? Some people will actually start their stone at the top and work their way down. You can do that because of how quick how quickly that will stick. Looks like Justin may have a second career here after his uh, trucking business. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want to make sure that you've gone far enough so that your stone will stick to it. Go a little bit further. Okay, now again, you're going to want to put mortar on the back of your stone. You're going to make it wet first, right? Your stone, good, good memory. Very good. Again, that's just to keep things from drying out co too quickly. All right, and you can smooth, smooth that out a little bit. 
You only have to hang on to that for a short amount of time. All right, looks like it's stuck. Justin, you're gonna wanna take your trowel, clean the top of that stone off. I'm not very good at this part. And again, that's why it's nice to have a clean bucket of water. Try to keep as much mortar off of the face of the stone as possible as you're working. So once you get your bottom course in, then it's just a matter of working your way up. Okay, now as you're working your way up, you don't want your seams to line up as you're going up the wall. So what you're gonna wanna do is break that seam up. Now this would be considered a dry stack, putting that stone tight against your other ones. Again, we recommend outdoors having a grout joint, so you would just raise that up about a half of an inch, hang on to it for just a little bit. Now you can use shims. A lot of times when you're cutting your stone, you'll end up with little pieces of stone. Um, you can put little stone shims in and that will keep uh, the separation between the two. Again, always break up your joints. Dry stack is if you have it tight. Mortar joint is if you raise it a half of an inch. Now one thing when you're working with corners, if you're not doing all flats, you always want to start with your corners. Okay, you start with your corners and work your way in and do your cuts on the inside. So if I can do it, anybody can do it, right? It's a very, <laughs> a very simple thing to do. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. You get uh, the feel of the consistency of the mortar. Um, you'll get really good at gauging what stones look really nice together. Okay, so once your project is completed, you've got all of your uh, stones up on your wall. The finishing touch, if you're doing a grout joint, you're gonna cut the end of it off, fill it with mortar, and it's just like decorating a cake. You're gonna, you're gonna squeeze your mortar into your joints. Once you get your joints filled with mortar, you're gonna wait for that to set up a little bit. Depending on temperature and humidity, it's gonna vary a little bit. You don't want it to get too hard because what you're gonna to wanna to do is clean that mortar joint up. You can see that's been grouted, it's been smoothed out, and it just gives it a nice clean look. All right guys, so instead of this being on your list of do not try at home, you actually now can try it at home. Although I will tell you, I had veneer done at my house. I did not do it myself. It just too much, too big of a project. And uh, I'm not that good at veneer stone, as you saw. Plus they don't make black mortar. Well, they do, but they do. anyway. Henry, thanks a lot for coming on and showing us all this uh, good stuff today. And hopefully this helps you guys. Uh, Henry, anything else you wanna say? For your veneer projects, we have a lot of knowledgeable salespeople here. Um, we can help you out with figuring out how much you need, how much grout, how much stone. Uh, any questions that you have, we're here for you. And again, now that Justin knows how to do it, uh, we can send him to your house. Wait a second, <laughs> he's begging on me. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Henry. Yeah, really appreciate welcome. it. All right, guys, I'll show you some of the stone that we have here when you walk in the door. So up on the wall, you can see is a lot of different veneer stone. We have many different styles, sizes of veneer stone. We also have sample boards. All these different boards you can take home if you want. You just sign them out and take them home. You can uh, match it up to your siding or whatever you want. A lot of people bring their siding pieces in here and they want to uh, you know, match it up that way, so either way. All right guys, hopefully you found this video educational. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Have a great day.